When working with the chance motor operator, keep hands and body clear during electrical operation of the motor operator. Always disconnect 120 volt AC power source on the battery operated unit before making field adjustments. Failure to do so may result in unexpected operation and personal injury. Close and lock switch gear cabinet doors, motor operator and battery enclosures to prevent unauthorized entry. Do not remove warning or caution labels from the motor operator. When lifting switch gear unit with motor operator installed, ensure extreme care is taken to assure that lifting means does not exert forces on the motor operator cabinet. When operating equipment, always follow operating steps on the cabinet door to help prevent equipment damage or personal injury. These instructions apply only to the motor operator and do not negate the need to follow instructions provided with the pad mounted switch gear unit. Chance motor operators are designed for use on chance pad mounted switch gear having external rotary end operators. Do not apply to other manufacturers equipment without first consulting chance. Do not energize pad mounted switch until after all application and operational checks are complete on the motor operator. This will prevent unnecessary circuit switching and customer annoyance. Chance motor operated switches are ideal for your distribution system automation. They can be operated manually, locally by motor, or remotely by motor. They also return statuses of switch in open or closed position, motor in open or closed position from manual operation, local remote switch position, exercise motor switch position, power switch position. The chance motor operator draws just 7 amps at 12 volts DC and 2 amps at 120 volts AC. This low energy draw makes it ideal for its application. If your switch is factory supplied with the motor operator assembled, fast forward the tape to the section on wiring. If you are field retrofitting to a switch, assemble the motor operator as follows. Chance motor operators are factory assembled and adjusted. Use reasonable care when handling the operator to help prevent misadjustment of internal components. When unit is received, check for damage or missing parts. Complete switch installation on pad, but do not energize. Motor operators come in right and left hand versions. Match cabinet mounting to switch mounting before attempting installation. Determine left or right hand configuration by facing the switch source panel. Install side operator housing shield on the back of the operator using provided screws and 5 16 inch hex socket. Shield slots provide for needed adjustments. Make sure switch is in closed position. Remove quick release pin by pulling on the T handle. Clevis key should be engaged in the shaft slot. Lift operator cabinet and guide hex ID sleeve over the hex shaft on the switch gear. Using the bolts provided with the operator, secure operator cabinet to switch tank. Check the installation by mechanically opening and closing the switch. Older switches may require an adapter plate for proper mounting lug location. Put the switch in the closed position. The set of three closed micro switches should be activated. Put the switch in the open position. The set of three open micro switches should be activated. In both instances, make sure both sets of cam pointers are aligned together. If they are not aligned, refer to chance field readjustment instructions. Put switch in the closed position, aligning the holes in the motor shaft and clevis assembly. Install quick release pin. Follow these steps for installing a 12 volt DC unit. Thread nut onto the two inch long threaded pipe, which is provided. Ensure there is one half inch from one end of the threaded pipe to the edge of the nut. Apply Teflon pipe joint tape to the half inch of exposed threads. On the opposite side of the nut, 
apply a bead of RTV silicone adhesive in the fillet between the nut and the threads of the pipe. Thread the taped end of the threaded pipe into the conduit adapter in the bottom of the motor operator enclosure until the edge of the nut is against the conduit adapter. The thread fit in the conduit adapter should be snug but not require wrenching. Apply a bead of RTV silicone adhesive around the top edge of the 1.88 inch diameter hole in the top of the battery cabinet. Position battery cabinet below the motor operator with threaded pipe passing through the hole in the top of the battery cabinet. Secure the battery cabinet to the pad mount switch with the two 5 8 inch bolts, washers, and lock washers that are provided. The lock washer should be next to the bolt head and the two flat washers between the lock washer and the battery cabinet. A 15 16 inch hex socket and extension of at least 6 inches is required. Hold the end of the threaded pipe inside the battery cabinet and tighten the nut down against the top of the battery cabinet. Apply a bead of RTV silicone adhesive around the threaded pipe inside the battery cabinet to further seal against moisture entry. Connect conduit for incoming AC power and communication leads to a one and one quarter NPT conduit adapter provided in bottom of battery cabinet. Train AC power and communication leads through conduit adapter of battery cabinet and to inside of the motor operator cabinet. Train the leads on the right side of the battery cabinet. Connect remote relay leads, if they're used, to the lower terminal strip terminals RO1 and RO2 for the opening command, and to RC1 and RC2 for the closing command to provide for remote switch operation. Note that the motor operator requires approximately 26 seconds from initiation of the operate signal to the motor operator for it to complete operation of the pad mount switch. Terminals switch open and switch close are not energized and are provided for determining pad mount switch position from a remote location. When the switch is in the open position, there will be continuity between common and normal open terminals of switch open and also continuity between common and normal closed terminals of switch closed. When the switch is in the closed position, there will be continuity between common and normal closed terminals of switch open, and also continuity between common and normal open terminals of switch closed. Make appropriate connections to common normal open and normal close terminals of switch open and switch closed on middle terminal strip to determine pad mount switch position remotely. Terminals motor open and motor closed are not energized and are provided for determining motor position from a remote location. When the linear actuator is in the open position extended, there will be continuity between common and normal open terminals of motor open and also continuity between common and normal closed terminals of motor closed. When the linear actuator is in the closed position, retracted, there will be continuity between common and normal closed terminals of motor open, and also continuity between common and normal open terminals of motor closed. Make appropriate connections to common, normal open, and normal closed terminals of motor open and motor closed on upper terminal strip to determine linear actuator position remotely. Exercise motor switch, ES, is a three-pole single throw switch. Terminals ESP1 and ESP2 are not energized and are provided to permit determination of position of exercise motor switch from a remote location. If the exercise motor switch is off, there will not be continuity between ESP1 and ESP2. If the exercise motor switch is on, there will be continuity between ESP1 and ESP2. Make appropriate connections to terminals ESP1 and ESP2 on upper terminal strip if it is desired to remotely determine position of exercise motor switch. Power switch, PS, is a three-pole single throw switch. 
terminals PSP1 and PSP2 are not energized and are provided to permit determination of position of power switch from a remote location. If the power switch is off, there will not be continuity between PSP1 and PSP2. If the power switch is on, there will be continuity between PSP1 and PSP2. Make appropriate connections to terminals PSP1 and PSP2 on upper terminal strip if it is desired to remotely determine position of power switch. The selector switch is a three-pole double throw switch. Terminals remote, local, and common are not energized and are provided to permit determination of position of selector switch from a remote location. If the selector switch is in the remote position, there will be continuity between remote and common. If the selector switch is in local position, there will be continuity between local and common. Make appropriate connection to terminals remote, local, and common on middle terminal strip if it is desired to remotely determine position of selector switch. Ground the cabinet using the ground terminal that is provided at the conduit adapter. Number four to number 14 is the wire range. Connect AC power leads to terminals labeled 120 volts AC line and neutral. Warning, during the following steps, be careful not to short the battery terminals or leads when installing battery and making connections, or battery could explode or cause fire. When installing a 12 volt operator, install the battery as follows. Remove the battery from its packing. Make sure voltage checks 12 volts nominal between positive and negative terminals. Install battery and bottom of enclosure with terminals on left. Slide battery all the way to the left side of the enclosure. Remove the charger from its packing. Remove backing from the adhesive strip. Install charger on top of the battery. Do not cover pressure relief vent holes. Warning. Always disconnect AC power supply leads to the charger before connecting or disconnecting the DC leads to the battery pack to prevent arcing or burning, which could damage equipment or injure operator. Connect the battery leads to the 12 volt DC plus and minus terminals on the lower terminal strip in the motor operator cabinet. Label the leads positive and negative respectively. Feed the battery leads through the threaded pipe and into the battery cabinet. Connect the battery lead labeled negative and the negative lead from the DC side of the charger to the negative black terminal of the battery. Connect the battery lead labeled positive and the positive lead from the charger to the positive red terminal of the battery. Note, make sure leads do not short out during overall installation. Feed the leads of the charger power cord through the threaded pipe and into the motor operator cabinet. Connect the black power cord lead to the terminal labeled 120 volt AC line and white lead to the 120 volt AC neutral terminal. Connect the green lead to the motor operator cabinet ground terminal. Install the power cord connector onto the charger plug. Chance motor operators are completely factory adjusted, but due to the possibility of damage or misadjustment during shipping, it is recommended that the following steps be performed before operating unit. Note, switch and motor operator are both shipped in closed position. Caution, the following operational checks must be made prior to energizing pad mount switch gear. Slide clevis key out to disengage shaft. Energize 120 volt AC incoming power leads. Set power switch to on, selector switch to local, and exercise motor switch to on. Warning, keep hands clear of motor operator during operation to prevent personal injury. Test run motor operator in both directions with clevis key disengaged. This is done by pushing the open or closed button motor should stop running at each end of travel. Turn power switch to off 
and exercise motor switch to off position. Slide clevis key in to engage shaft. This may require slight turn of hex shaft with handle provided while engaging key. Install plastic shield over retainer bolts. Turn power switch to on position and perform a couple of open close local electrical operations by pushing the open and close buttons. Note. Make sure that pad-mounted switch is opening and closing as desired by visual observation or continuity check. Check remote circuitry if used by initiating electrical operation of unit from remote location. Power switch must be on and selector switch on remote. Note, this motor operator requires approximately 26 seconds from initiation of the operate signal to motor operator for it to complete operation of the pad-mount switch. After all operational checks are complete, the pad-mounted switch gear may be energized and overall installation completed. Note, be sure that the clevis key is engaged and the power switch and selector switch are left in desired positions. If remote circuitry is used, the clevis key must be engaged, the power switch on, and the selector switch set on remote. Warning. Failure to engage the clevis key or have the power switch on and the selector switch on remote will prevent the pad-mounted switch from being operated by remote command. Warning. Always close, secure, and lock cabinet doors on switch gear, motor operator, and battery enclosures to prevent unauthorized entry and possible damage to equipment or personal injury. If the motor continued to run after the pad-mounted switch was opened or closed, follow this procedure. Field readjustment instructions. Power switch must be on. Selector switch in the local position. Exercise motor switch on and clevis key engaged. Press close button to close the pad-mount switch. Check to see that the linear actuator motor has stopped running and that it is in the retracted closed position. If the motor has not stopped running at the end of travel, turn the power off. Slide the clevis key out to disengage shaft and turn the power on. The actuator motor should stop running when it is fully retracted. Turn the power switch to off and the exercise motor switch to off. Incoming 120 volt AC power leads to the motor operator must be de-energized then disconnected from the lower terminal strip. If motor operator is battery powered, disconnect the 12 volt DC minus and plus incoming power leads from lower terminal strip. Make sure the 12 volt DC leads do not short. Bare ends should be temporarily taped to prevent shorting. Remove the quick release pin to decouple the linear actuator from the clevis assembly. If disengaged, now slide the clevis key in to engage shaft. Using operator handle provided, perform mechanical close clockwise operation, assuring the shaft is turned to the end of travel so that all slack is taken up in the linkages. The back side of the cams must activate the closed micro switches. If the back of the cams have not reached the micro switch rollers, then adjust both sets of cams by loosening the set screws and rotating the cams until the leading edges of the back side of the cams are slightly past the rollers. Tighten all set screws. If back side of the cams have reached the rollers, but the micro switches are not activated, loosen the mounting screws slightly, which secure the closed micro switches mounting bracket. Slide the micro switches until the roller lever engages the cams and a click is heard from all three micro switches. Tighten both mounting screws securely. Perform mechanical open counterclockwise operation, assuring the shaft is turned to the end of travel so that all slack is taken up in the linkages. The back side of the cams must activate the open micro switches. If the back of the cams have not reached the micro switch rollers, then adjust both sets of cams by loosening the set screws and rotating the cams until the leading edges of the back side of the cams are slightly past the rollers. Tighten all set screws. 
The amount of cam engagement past the roller should be approximately the same in both the open and closed position. If the back side of the cams have reached the rollers, but the micro switches are not activated, loosen the mounting screws slightly, which secure the open micro switches mounting bracket. Slide the micro switches until the roller lever engages the cams and a click is heard from all three micro switches. Tighten both mounting screws securely. Perform mechanical close clockwise operation, assuring the shaft is turned to the end of travel so that all slack is taken up in the linkages. Turn end of linear actuator shaft clockwise until it is fully retracted. Turn the shaft back counterclockwise one complete turn. Loosen the 3 8 inch bolts which secure the linear actuator mounting bracket. Align holes in linear actuator shaft and clevis assembly. Replace quick release pin. If necessary, turn actuator shaft counterclockwise to align holes. Pull motor down toward lower left corner of enclosure to remove slack and pin joint. Assure hex shaft is turned fully clockwise, removing slack. Tighten linear actuator mounting bracket bolt securely. Reconnect 120 volt AC power leads and 12 volt DC battery leads to lower terminal strip. Re-energize incoming 120 volt AC power leads. Turn the power switch to on. Turn linear actuator internal limit switch adjustment knob counterclockwise one quarter turn. Press the open button to operate the motor and pad mount switch. When the linear actuator motor has stopped running, turn the internal limit switch knob clockwise one click at a time until the pad mount switch has operated. Note, the open micro switches should be fully activated. If this is not the case, readjust as shown earlier. Operating instructions. AB chance motor operators for pad mounted switch gear are available in 120 volt AC or 12 volt DC versions. These units provide the user with the choice of three operating options, local electrical operation, remote electrical operation, or local manual operation. Warning, read and follow operating instructions supplied with pad mounted switch unit. Failure to do so could result in personal injury or equipment damage. Operation steps. The following steps should be performed in sequence when operating AB chance motor operators. Local operation. Warning, always keep hands clear when performing electrical operation to prevent personal injury. The clevis key must be fully engaged in shaft slot. Power switch must be in the on position. Set selector switch on local position. Activate open or close push button to operate switch. Remote operation. The clevis key must be engaged. Power switch must be in the on position. Set selector switch to remote position. Note, this motor operator requires approximately 26 seconds from initiation of the operate signal to motor operator for it to complete operation of the pad mount switch. Manual operation. Move power switch to off position. Set selector switch to local position. Warning. Failure to move the power switch to the off position and set the selector switch to the local position could result in personal injury. Lift off plastic shield inside motor operator enclosure. Slide clevis key out to disengage operating shaft. Use handle provided to operate switch manually. After manual operation is complete, return switch to original position. Slide clevis key in to engage shaft. Replace motor operator shield and store handle. Set selector switch on remote position. Set power switch in on position. Warning. Failure to engage clevis key or have the power switch on and the selector switch on remote will prevent the pad mounted switch from being operated by remote circuitry. Warning, 
always close, secure, and lock cabinet doors on switchgear, motor operator, and battery enclosures to prevent unauthorized entry and possible damage to equipment or personal injury. Warning, to prevent personal injury, be sure to follow all the safety instructions contained in this video. In order to maximize service life and provide satisfactory performance, there are specific maintenance-related actions which should be performed. Frequency of maintenance activity must be determined based on local climatic conditions, service duty, and utility operating experience. It is recommended that the motor operator be exercised periodically, per the steps that follow, to make sure that all functions are performing satisfactorily. Warning, keep hands clear of motor operator during electrical operation to prevent personal injury. Set power switch to off and selector switch to local. Lift off motor operator shield inside motor operator enclosure. Slide clevis key out to disengage shaft. You may need to turn hex shaft slightly with operating handle. Set both the power switch and the exercise motor switch to their on positions. Note original position of motor operator, either closed or open. Test run motor operator in both directions with clevis key disengaged. This is done by pushing the open or closed button. If applicable, check remote operation by setting the selector switch to remote and operate the motor operator by remote circuitry. Set selector switch to local. Make sure motor operator is in the original position as noted in the step above. Set the power switch to off and the exercise motor switch to off positions. Slide clevis key in to engage shaft. This may require slight turn of hex shaft with handle provided while engaging key. Install motor operator shield. Set selector switch to remote position and power switch to on. Warning, failure to engage the clevis key or have the power switch on and the selector switch on remote will prevent the pad mounted switch from being operated by remote circuitry. Warning, always close, secure and lock cabinet doors on switch gear, motor operator and battery enclosures to prevent unauthorized entry and possible damage to equipment or personal injury.